What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight's Tuesday massive slate. Not a good night for me at all on DK. Got crushed. Um, did well on FanDuel unlimited lineups, but uh, wasn't my favorite night. And uh, ready to get back back to a full slate tonight. Tons of options. Lots of different ways to go. More than more pitching options than I've seen in the mid tier in a long time. Yep. And uh, it's going to be a wild one. Sheets, any thoughts on this? And how'd you do last night? I did not do well. Um, and uh, any can't even imagine what I did. I don't even remember. Um, oh yeah, I had um, I had Mania. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, that, that, that didn't help. <laughs> that that will that will do it. Um, and uh, ready to get after it today. There's a lot of good pitching options, and uh, I'm gonna not play that big. Um, not many many lineups. I'll play you know probably one big lineup, maybe a couple of us. I will be at City Field for the Yankees Mets. So oh beautiful, awesome. Yeah, yep. well, that should be fun. Yep um all right man well let's pull up your screen and let's go game by game and see if we can figure out what we're going to do here yeah, we're definitely we're definitely going to be playing a showdown slate though for that game it's, uh oh yeah yeah yeah. i mean <laughs> i could make an argument i'll get we'll get into it when we get to that game because i i have some thoughts it is pretty good hitting weather there in in yep. uh, city field um all right tampa bay baltimore you have one of the chalk pitchers on the slate you do have some weather concerns here that look like it could be a little scary, which would be nice to have somebody you could X out. Um, as it currently stands, I have McClanahan as one of the top five. And I think you could make a really strong case that he's the top of everybody today. So I am high on McClanahan, but I am hoping the weather gives me a reason to not play so many guys. The one, the one thing that does hurt McClanahan too, so far the only extreme umpire of any kind on the slate that we don't have them all out yet, but uh, McClanahan is facing the most extreme umpire on the slate for hitters. Um, so that's one, that's one thing, I guess, if you want to try and fade McClanahan, you can look at, otherwise it seems like a really good spot. How about you sheets? Yeah, I got, um, like eight pitchers <laughs> that I want to play. I do too. And, and I don't, um, and, uh, certainly McClanahan's one of them, you know, he's, uh, freaking, mowing everybody down uh and he's not that baltimore is you know baltimore is not the, not the worst in the world but some of these pitches as i've learned it just, it just doesn't matter anyway you know what i mean um, he's just gonna just mow people down as as are some other people probably on this slate so if for whatever reason that he ends up being like super chalky I mean, I, I feel as though he will be if he, if 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 the if the weather is good, he'll definitely. I mean, he's the most consistent pitcher in baseball for fantasy. He basically right. doesn't get there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll 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 you know he's on my list, and if he ends up too chalky, I'll probably fade him. That's that's, that's going to be my my uh, my uh, my take. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't quite get to any of this um, with respect to the hitting. I I narrowed my hitting down to maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, like eight or eight or nine options. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I didn't get to either Tampa or Baltimore. Oh, I that's not true. That's not true. I actually did get this in Tampa. I um, have Tampa as number eight personally. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That, you know what? That's about right. Actually. Yeah. Um, yep. The one thing is Watkins has been good. Hasn't given up a lot of power. Hasn't given up a home run. I believe in his last six starts. Um, and it, it's, it's not, you know, it's not the ball. It's not the hitters ballpark that it once was. You have the extreme hitters umpire, and a team that's pretty disciplined uh, for the most part. I think the main thing is here. I would, I would, I would definitely be on board with with Brandon Lau as a one off or um, a Rosarena as, as maybe a little two man or something. Maybe you mix in Choi and make it a three man. I definitely can get behind that. I don't think it's what I'm going to do. Like I said, I have them eighth, so uh, probably just going to leave it, uh, leave them mostly off of my list. I I might have some Brandon Lau uh, one offs though because I just I love that guy too much. Got the power speed upside combination that we love. All right. Now we have a the Atlanta Philadelphia game. Um, this is one where I think both pitchers are to say they're in play is a understatement. I think you can make an argument. I mean, so just to give you guys a, a feel, seven the seven and a half K prop for for McClanahan, seven and a half for Nola, seven and a half for Strider as well. Um yeah, there's some different odds in there, but they're mostly pretty much in the same range of, of that strikeout prop. Spencer Strider, when I mean, he's looked completely unhittable at times. He struggled at other times to get through five innings. And uh, I feel like he's a great tournament play that's going to have uh, cash game ownership. 
I'm 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 more on the Nola side of this one myself. Um, Atlanta does still strike out, and they do face Nola quite a bit. He's got a mixed history with them, but he does have a good K rate. And I am very high on Nola and Strider. I think these are tough matchups, but these are two of the better pitchers. And we know Nola will go out there and throw 110 pitches most likely. Strider, we don't have so much confidence that he will, but he's going to strike out a huge, a higher number of the batters he faces than anybody else in the slate, uh, other than maybe McClanahan is pr- pretty close between those two. Um, so I like them both. And I think that they're they're both in good spots. Is good hitting weather in Philadelphia for what it's worth. And we have other pitchers to consider, but these guys are both very high on my list. Yeah, they're they're part of both these guys are part of the top eight um, for me. Um, just a matter of how you piece these guys together, you know. I, I also have both of them be both of them will be owned. You know, I have I have early, early ownerships. I've, I have it pretty spread out among my eight. Let's put it that way. That's why I was wondering if McClane is going to be that chalky, just because I think these other guys are going to just take money. You know, I don't know. I, I I literally had my eight pitchers, like two of them are kind of pivots. But, but the other six are all, I have like 20%. You know what I mean? As far as ownership goes. So they have to, people have to play somebody more than the other. So I guess maybe you're right. I guess at the end of the day, they're just going to play McClanahan. You know what I mean? Like uh, I think it's going to be a combination of all these guys, to be honest with you. I really do think that people will talk themselves one way or another. I think the weather, if it gets bad, you might see McClanahan be the lowest owned of all of them. Uh, so when I, when I did, I so when I did while he moved just like two seconds ago, I ran a, a saber sim build um, just with with my projections, just to see if I ran 150 lineups, like where these guys would kind of just spread out. Mm-hmm. And actually, these two I, I have as the would would be my top two highest exposed, um, Nola and Strider. Actually, um, uh, not, not the other the other guys we'll talk about, and one we did talk about, right? McClanahan's pretty close behind, but I do have Nola and Strider as being this you know, really, really up there. Let's put it that way. They have, they're the top two, as far as I'm concerned, in my 150 bill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That certainly uh, certainly doesn't surprise me. I, I think that yeah. there's tremendous upside. I do think there is some downside. I mean, if it was a smaller slate, I would talk about getting creative against uh, against Strider in case he gets a little wild. But uh, yeah, I, I think that I think that they both look like, uh, you know, excellent options as of right now. But it's just a matter of how that we weigh them against these other guys who might be some of them in a little bit better matchups. All right, uh, Berrios and Palante, uh, Toronto and St. Louis. I, it's, it's, I, I mean, look, you know, Toronto, uh, I think is one of the top stacks on the slate. And I think Ber- Berrios is going to be overlooked because of the Cardinals' low strikeout rate against righties. But he's also like, you don't have Goldschmidt and Arenado with the lineup they're currently projected to run out there. The strikeout rate goes to above average. Barrios is excellent against right-handed hitters has really been good with his swinging strike stuff lately. He's got, he's got a four and a half K prop today. And I think it's like one of the best bets you could possibly make. I'll put up my bets on true DFS a little later, but it's four and a half K prop is way too low. And uh, yeah, it's minus minus one eighty three, So it's not quite a, you know, you're not getting great value on it, but maybe if you can find, if you have a site where you can bump it up to five and a half, I still think it's a reasonable bet. So I, I, I do like Barrios. I don't like him quite as much as the other guys who are just above him. So he probably won't be one of my top five pitchers. He's definitely one of my top eight. Um, but I do think he's interesting. And I think that that, that strikeout prop is just way too low. Uh, and I like Toronto quite a bit. They're one of my top stacks. As of right now, I have him as one of my top three stacks. The only issue I have is Palante has been just like capable enough in his starts, even in some tough matchups. Um, he has given out, he can give up some home runs. You can You can run on him a little bit. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I would like to stack. I, I do think the Blue Jays make a ton of sense as a stack, basically. Yeah, as far as the pitching goes, I mean, look, this is. Uh, I feel as though we should have been on this a little bit more during the season, but I mean, when these when these teams go into Toronto like, and they then they have to like bench guys because of because uh, of COVID protocols. I mean, depending on who you end up benching, I mean, it just changes your whole thing. Like, remember, like last week, uh, the, the, the Kansas City basically threw a minor league lineup out there against. Yeah against against Manoa and that you know that was the t- hashtag 10 nothing game right. um and and I, I think that um I think that you could almost do the same thing I think you'd almost bet Toronto here to win you know what I mean like if you're gonna have they're gonna be without her but they're, they're like they're like minus 250 I think oh are they okay. something crazy like that well so you know oh I was gonna say if, if, if if you thought Toronto was a good stack, then just freaking lay the lay the run in the half and you know and whatever, yep. just be done with it. Um, yep. But it's I guess not exactly the same. Um, 
so Barrios is going to show up for me pretty much exactly what you said. I mean, I have him in my top eight, not my top five. I like some other guys in that bright rate price range a little bit better, but he'll this guy, you know, he'll be probably, you know, he's going to end up being owned at the end, at the end of the day. I think, um, it, see, seeing like whoever the Cardinals put in this lineup, um, mm-hmm. I think he is going to end up being old, but he, but he can't be on that much. There's so many better options. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so I, you know, he's, 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 he's an okay play, I suppose. And it's weird. I, I, for whatever reason, I'm not quite getting to as much Toronto as maybe I, I thought I would. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll just kind of see what happens. Uh, mm-hmm. So for me, if the game is prop, I don't want to say a pass, maybe some Barrios, and that would be probably be it. All right, let's uh let's move over to uh Cleveland and Boston. We have uh it's going to be a sort of a bullpen. It's it's not a, bu- a typical bullpen game though. I want to make a clear difference because we talk a lot about bullpen games and not wanting to stack against them on full slates. When you have their starting pitcher going an inning and the next guy usually goes four to five innings versus a guy who goes an inning then a two inning then a three inning, you know, or a two inning thing all the way down. It's a lot a lot better when you have the guy who's going to pitch the four or five in the middle, even if he's struggling, which he has every time he's pitched so far, and that's Kirk McCarty. Um, and then you've got Brian Shaw and basically a bullpen game on the other side. So both of these offenses look good to me, especially Boston. Uh, I do think Boston is going to have a little bit of ownership, but the truth is it's hard to get too much ownership when there's a lot of good stacks that are sort of projecting very similarly today. And there's also in two of those are in cores. So uh, I, I do like Boston quite a bit. You got the price on, you know, Bobby Dahlbeck's 2.5, uh, going to get a lefty in there for at least, at least one of those, probably t- maybe two or more at bats. Um, he should be up in the lineup because of it. Uh, Verdugo, JD Martinez should be back. Obviously we love JD against lefties. So I have Boston as another one of my top stacks today. Um, and I think that I have no problem with Cleveland, certainly some one-offs. Um, but also as a stack, I mean, you've got the cheap options like Nolan Jones, if you wanted to go Miles Straw and, and Maley, those guys are all in the two Ks. But if you if you mix one of one or two of those guys with the Fran Mel Reyes, who's also three point two, Jose Ramirez, the real the real hitters, as we say, uh, Josh Naylor, that kind of thing, I, I definitely could see getting to, to both these guys in this in this slate personally. Yes, I, I this is a game I think you could play both sides of uh, the hitting, um, play Boston or and Cleveland game stack this or whatever whatever you want to call it. Um, you get a good umpire, it's even better. Um, but uh, I, I definitely like both sides of this. And the one other guy that I would throw in, um, I don't know if he's any good, but just he's showing up as he's 2K if he gets in the game, is, uh, is Jeter Downs from Boston. Yeah, he'll play. Uh, he's played yeah, play. so I mean, he's 2K. I mean, I'll, just, I'll just say that. He's 2K. Um, he's 2K in a, in a game where you know, people might want to stack. So um, uh I already you already mentioned Dahlbeck and you know the rest seem better. Yeah, Yomer also is two point one, right? Um, and potentially we, we'll see whether or not what's his name makes the lineup today because the lefty uh, Cordero. Um, yeah. All right, uh, moving over to the game you're going to. Yes, I'm there. I will be there. And and you know everybody says it every year how much Tywin Walker sucks and he just sort of keeps doing his thing. He's been really sure he's actually been really good. Worst ninety four hundred um, pitcher that uh, we keep not playing for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, we're not going to do it again tonight. I don't think. No. Um, <laughs> nope. I'm not touching either of these pitchers. Uh, good hitting weather in New York on a different yeah. different type of situation. Even with all the the things I'm saying about about uh, Walker, I could see this being a good spot for the Yankees at low ownership. I. It's a 150 type of play where you where you put a few lineups in. I don't think that that should be a priority stack, um, but I do think that the Yankees are re- are are interesting here. You're just never going to see them this low owned against the pitcher that, you know, if we did this game two months ago, I, I think that the Yankees would have a five and a half run total, and it's only four. So, I uh, and then other than that, you're only looking at potentially a one off of uh, of Alonzo against Montgomery. Other than that, I have no interest in the hitting in this game, and not really the pitching either, to be honest. One thing I would say, this is uh, this is something you've been talking about a little bit more this year than than you have in previous years. But remember, this is this is a subway series, uh, and they're making a really big deal about this around here. That's so true. so you're going to get no breaks. You know what I mean? Like they're going to every out's going to matter. You know, if, if uh, there's this uh, if, if if a pitcher's in trouble, he's going to get pulled. You know what I mean? Like this is uh they're going to play this really close to the vest this game. So uh, not usually that exactly means, but. Uh, I don't think you're going to get any big, huge 
huge numbers out of either of these any out of either of these uh these bats if you want to the truth. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I totally agree with that. Um all right, now we have Hill against Clevenger in San Diego. Uh I'm sorry, in Detroit. I I like uh Clevenger here quite a bit. And he is He's got a little bit of a higher K prop than Bit Barrios. Um, I, I I always have been a big Clevenger guy, and I think we're starting to see him actually work deeper into games. I like the matchup against Detroit, obviously, and just an in between umpire at the moment. But I have Clevenger as one of my top five, and he's just ahead of Barrios for me. And I am I am flirting with the idea of going back to San Diego again, but it doesn't feel great um just feels like on a 15 game slate you're not or whatever a 13 game slate you're not supposed to stack them but they i don't know i think that they're i mean mazara's 2.6 you got uh hill and then I, the, the, again the bullpen that i say i don't trust in detroit although they've been better than i thought they would be uh voight's reasonable uh you've got you know profar has been great uh machado i think and if you wanted to play go different play hosmer at first for 2400 I just think San Diego is one of those teams that's probably on the outside looking in for me, but they're definitely some team I'm considering. I think I think Clevenger's a fishy play here. I don't know. Um, I don't know. He hasn't done anything for me since he's come back. If you want to know the truth, I mean, well, he's see... coming back from a two-year long injury. I get it. And well, he's through ninety-five pitches. Okay, so you know, show me, show me something. I don't know. Um, Did you I, take 20, 25 out of him? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, Detroit's been crushing chalk soul the last two years. I mean, they did a number on me with Minaya yesterday. Um, <laughs> and I'm seeing Clevenger, you know, is, listen, only because th- there are other options. Is he not even going to be chalkier? You know, um, I don't know. He is coming up for two years. And 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 I don't know. I I, I, I OK, I just always lose playing this this <laughs> this idea. I, I think I'd rather play. I'd rather play Barrios. I don't know. That's actually a good question. Um, I just assume playing either of them. Um, but yeah, he is showing up for me as a top. He's definitely my top eight. Probably in my top. Actually, he's in my top six. Um, but there's very little difference in my top six. So, um, and I know, I know. Now I'm like a third guess myself because people are like, I, I heard a little bit already today. Well, you know, Detroit's coming off of 12 runs. There's no way they're doing that again. So now let's go right back and let's attack them again. Yeah. It's, it's another five run first inning. I don't know. It's a, uh, uh, we'll, 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 we'll see what I end up doing. This is one of the reasons I use Saberson sometimes is just to like pull, pull my biases out of this. Cause it, telling you left this to my own device. I just literally would not play this play Clevenger here, but I'm probably getting up getting to him. It's probably, it's probably for the best. Yeah, I'm just going to throw out a couple things about Detroit. We could say that we could say that about any team because every team is going to yeah, have a flyer game. Their previous ten games, they got shut out in four of them. They are the worst offense in baseball against right-handed pitching. I guess so. So I, I'm just going to say, like, we can we can take one night samples if we want to, but I just in the long run, I'm just going to keep betting on the it's it's a it's a long-term game baseball. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I, I can't I can't quite get to the Detroit being scary part of it. I can understand no. the questions about Clevenger, maybe not, but he's been. I mean, two of his last four starts, he was awesome, and he's had some tough matchups. I mean, you're, to play in the NL West is not is not no picnic, and when you get to go out and face one of the worst teams in baseball, well, probably the worst team. You like I'm San Diego? Like San Diego here at all or no? I do a little bit. You also have you know some you know decent wind, potentially ten mile an hour winds blowing in from center field, takes me a little bit off of San Diego. But like I said, I think they probably end up on the stack wise on the outside looking in. Doesn't mean I won't have some Nomar Mazzara though at 2.6, uh, just if I, if I need some value. Um, all right, LA and KC. I mean, if you just look at the pitchers' names, although actually I think Suarez is more talented than maybe he gets credit for. I think you could just say like, oh, this seems like a great spot. I am having a very hard time getting to a whole lot here. And it's just because the size of the slate. So I am I'm not all that excited about this one personally. Um, nice hitting weather, 80 degrees, only a tiny bit, three miles an hour blowing in right now. Um, I'm just not doing it personally, but I, I'm not going to fault anybody for playing this game. Well, that, that, that's 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 good that you're not going to fault anybody for playing it because I'm I'm going to do this. You're all you're all into it. I love it. Yeah, I'll play the Kansas City. Um, I'll I'll you know what I'll take my chances with 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 Merrifield at 3900. You know for openers. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, who else we got? Hunter Dozier, this Pasquantino character is 2300. Mm -hmm. Um, against Swar, I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll take my chances. I, I, I want, I want to, I want to pay for these pictures. And if I'm getting, if I'm seeing these prices, they're, they're probably going to be pretty chalky. Wouldn't you imagine? No, I guess. No, uh, Suarez, is, Suarez is not a bad pitcher. Okay. Um, it, it's, it, this is not some guy who goes out there and just gets, I mean, he's been giving up tons oh, of runs this year. I think he's still trying to figure it out. His year has been really off, but I don't think he's, I, I don't think he has no talent. I mean, he got roughed up by the Dodgers last time out. That's forgivable. Um, Baltimore is, uh, you know, whatever he had a bad outing. He, I just, I, I, right before that, he was sort of finding his groove. I, I don't know where he stands right now, but I, I understand it. The problem is like for KC, if I play them, I want people who can, I want a, a guy you can run on this guy. I don't know if he's ever given up a stolen base before. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that, that, that's a little bit, it takes a little bit of the, the upside out of their lineup for me because wit both wits are going to run. And so will well, Bobby, Bobby Witt might not play. Yeah. If Bobby Witt plays, of course. And if Bobby Witt d does play there, I think their stack is a lot more interesting um, I do think Whit Merrifield will get some ownership, but I don't think it's going to be anything special. I mean, Michael Taylor's also 2K, could be moved up yeah. in the lineup today against the lefty. Um, but I personally am just I, – I, I just can't play everybody. So I, I love that. I love it if you have a take on it because I, I think it's great. And I yeah. like, like you say, one of us will win. Yeah, um, yeah, I think so. It's just not not quite for me. Okay. Um. Only because it's has a slate, though. I mean, I, I would I would have considered it very differently yesterday. Uh, all right. Well, for me, the fact of the matter is I don't really feel like playing Coors, and I don't really feel like playing the Dodgers. I mean, like, not that I don't feel like playing them. I just feel as though those are the three. I don't think any, I, I don't think anybody's playing the Dodgers for what it's worth. We'll get, we'll get, oh, good. We'll get to that. Then. Yeah. Um, on DraftKings. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Who what, who did Dylan Bundy sleep with to get his price shot? He's has he been not? Has he been like really bad recently? If I missed, hasn't it? done anything oh. really. Like, uh, okay, okay. I don't think he's put up a. Tw I think he, his last twenty fantasy point game was in uh, April. Yeah, he had um, a third. He had a thirty, which basically knocked him out for the rest of his rest of the season. Looks like. Yeah, that's what I, that's what he does. You get you okay. get it. On All right, right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, um, another one that I probably would have more interest on another slate. I do think Minnesota is especially a little more interesting here. Um, if you had to pick a side. You got who knows where they end up batting Sano tonight. Um, who's back? He's probably at the bottom of the order, but Garlic's 3K should be in the middle of the order. Now there's always pinch hit risk there. Uh, Buxton, Correa, Sanchez. I could get behind Minnesota, and they're they're not one of my first, you know, three, but they are in my top eight, and I think that they're just they're interesting enough to where I'm definitely going to consider them. And Buxton at 5.1 is pretty awesome against the lefty anytime that comes up. So. I have some interest in Minnesota here. Um, what about um? So, so you like Minnesota? So you're not gonna you're not gonna approve of uh of the Ethan Small idea at fifty three hundred. I need to get some something that he's pitched one game. He pitched two and two third innings. I don't. That's know. a lot, man. Two two thirds. I don't know how much he's gonna pitch. Um, <laughs> if I did that, I think I could find the twelve hundred for Bundy or somebody else. I, you know, I think that's probably true. Okay. But I, yeah, I have no no interest for now. Me. He's he's guys. By the way, I mentioned there was eight pitchers. Like he's actually significantly behind the eight, but he would be nine. I'll, I'll give him that. Um, so uh, yeah, so so I'm I'm not gonna probably do anything on this. Yeah, I think I think I'm, I think that's probably the right approach. Minnesota probably ends up on the outside looking in. I just think it's interesting enough. Yeah, I, you know me. I, I never like to pick on Milwaukee's bullpen too much, but if your bullpen, you're going to throw out the hard throwing lefties against this Minnesota team. I'm a little bit more interested. Um, anyway, so so you have two two pretty two pretty decent pitchers in an impossible spot, right? So uh, I shouldn't say impossible, right? So you have two pretty decent pitchers in Coors. So what do you do? You have the White Sox, who basically everybody likes to play. Uh, most days, uh, even if they're not doing well, because quite honestly, I mean, they're, they're, they're more talented than some of their results have, uh, have, have shown me shown this year. So people just keep going back to them and they're going to go back to them today. Um, mm -hmm. I have them as one of the top stacks on the board. Um, but they're not, you know, not unfadeable or anything like that. Uh, and on the other side, I have Colorado listed as, uh, as, as a stack as well. Again, not unfadeable. Um, but you know, it's there's no disputing the air in Coors and uh certainly look they're gonna look okay, but it's not these are not two bad pitchers, you know. So it's uh it's it's really a tough call for me. Actually, it really isn't. I'm probably I'm probably gonna end up not playing. 
like in my in my in my bigger body. It's just because I just don't like to, I just don't like to do it. I don't like to play the course games. Um, and if I'm going to double pay up also for for pitching, I don't know. I'll go somewhere else. That's that's my theory. Uh, that's my idea. Um, you know, probably end up this will be the game where it's seven seven after the first inning, you know, whatever. But uh, I'm just going to keep fading cores until until further notice. Yeah, I, I don't see this. I mean, I think I think it's I think it's completely fine to play it. You do have a little bit of somewhat in from from right winds, um, a little bit across the field. We'll take it. <laughs> Anything take it. you can find, but I actually think that that these teams go especially Colorado goes just really under owned and against a young pitcher. I could, I could see making a case either way. Like this is not the right slate to try and play Kopech, but I could see him having a really good outing against a team that hasn't faced him before, or I could see them, him getting a little bit wild, getting into trouble his first game at Coors and giving it four home runs. Um, so I, I think Colorado is actually really interesting. And I, and I again, I, I like the white Sox, uh, you know, prices uh, that they didn't go up of, of course, you have some weird cross position stuff where Abreu and Andrew Vaughn are both first base eligible, but uh, Vaughn is also outfield eligible. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly okay with playing the white Sox, uh, but I don't feel like I need to, they are one of my top four yep. um, and Colorado. I have them both sort of in the same range. Colorado will be the lower owned of the bunch, but I definitely think these guys are interesting. I don't see them as being significantly better than Boston or Toronto personally. Yep. Uh, all right, Arizona, San Francisco. This is this is the game we we're supposed to. I think we were supposed to get Gilbert yesterday, right? Like, yep. uh, you know, you got all the San Francisco stuff, and I actually think they're going to get some ownership. I think that they'll they might be more popular than they'll be more popular than the Rockies. Um, just to give you an idea, and then you're playing in in, in this in indoors with the humidifier, humidor. I mean, and the uh, the the roof closed. Uh, I certainly uh, on paper, you know, the prices of Mercedes Slater and rough alone, make it like, it look like an interesting stack. I have no problem. If anybody wants to do that, maybe you could use it as a complimentary stack, but I like other stacks better for full stacks today than those. If you did want to make it a full one, I would suggest making sure you have Wilmore Flores in there, but I am, uh, I'm definitely fine with it. If you want to do it, I just am not getting to San Francisco much myself today. Yeah, we're gonna have to see because I I didn't have them as as highly owned as you did. So we're gonna we're gonna see where that kind of comes in. Oh, I forgot um, to mention Rodon also. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean that's I a, do really like Rodon. Well, where well well let's let's talk about that. So how do you have Rodon relative to some of these other guys we've talked about? I have him currently a tiny bit behind Nola, but I think that I could make I I, I probably should have him boosted up a little bit more. What's the reason why I usually give Nola the edge in that is because I know that like if Rodon, if it's if the game's close in the fifth or sixth inning, they often just pull him at like 90 some odd pitches or 80 some odd pitches, even in certain spots. And, I, I, you know, Nola is always going to throw the a million pitches, but Rodon certainly has the ceiling has oddly enough, not really faced the Diamondbacks. This, I don't think he's faced them this year, which is kind of weird for an interdivision game this late in the season. And uh, so I have him just behind, but I'm, I'm very happy to, to flip that around. I don't, I don't think it's a huge, huge gap uh, between any of these guys, to be honest with you. So uh, you do have an Arizona team that doesn't strike out a crazy amount against lefties, depending on who they put in the lineup today, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I think Rodon is right there with the other guys for me, maybe just a little behind. How about you? Yeah, I have him a little bit behind. Um, it's a, uh... Some of his results are a little fishy. You know, listen, I'm, I'm willing to give him sort of a pass at the Dodgers against the Dodgers. I mean, the Milwaukee game was was pretty pretty bad. I mean, you know what I mean? Like uh, giving up eight hits, three walks, whatever. Then uh, the San Diego game was obviously a smash. But being before that against the same team, I mean. Oh, he did, oh, he did face them that one time. My bad. Yeah, yeah I, they let him in for 100 pitches, but it was pretty, pretty, pretty miserable if you want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, he did have that run where he had put up some good scores, but just, I just have to feel as though you're, you're going to find the, the 500 for, from McClanahan, if you want to know the truth, you know, I just feel like, and, you, and, and the word you used, I think he's just consistent. He's just more consistent nowadays than Rodon. You know what I mean? And McClanahan just brings it, you know? And, uh, um, I, I have Rodon below Nola. I have him below, uh, the other the other guy but but um i don't know he's it's close it's close listen it's close enough i'll end up probably getting to him depending on how many lineups i play whatever but and with respect to san francisco again i have to do an ownership update to 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 uh 
figure this out because I do have them as a, uh, as the remaining stack that I'd be interested in. Well, we'll get to the Dodgers in a minute, but uh, I do have interest in San Francisco, but you know what? The same um, caveat is always with San Francisco. I mean, you might not get all, you get, might not get your at bats mm -hmm. uh, as you get later into the game with these guys. So uh, uh, that's, 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 uh, that, that's later may happen about. earlier, even if Gilbert's not getting rocked, you know what I mean? He might, right. he might just pitch three or four innings because he's, his pitch count is up or something, you know, and then yeah. all of a sudden you get two at bats and maybe a walk out of maybe Slater, Mercedes or rough. And the next thing you know, they turn into Jock Peterson, Brandon Belt, et cetera. Or actually, I don't know if Belt's on the IL now, but they do have enough left-handed bats, Yastrzemski. Um, so I'm curious to see how the lineup shakes out. Uh, but I, I do think that Slater probably has a little less pinch hit risk than he did because he's been hot. But they definitely all have a ton of risk. Um, that's for sure. All right. Uh, let's talk about Houston and Oakland. Uh do you want a really safe guy? <laughs> Seeming, you know, safe, safe is obviously relative, but <clears throat> I mean, he's been really consistent. Garcia, it's really hard to pay 9.1K for a guy who's got a prop, a 2K prop less than everybody else. I don't think I can do it. Uh, Montas at this price against Houston. I don't know if I want to do that either. Uh, this feels like a stay away game for me personally. Yeah. First of all, I mean, I, uh, I did notice that the, the Oakland did put up the seven runs against Oda uh, I don't know if it was all against Oda Rizzi, but he picked the, they did put up the seven runs yesterday. They didn't really score a lot of fantasy points in doing it. Um, but uh, just no, just that to note, but yeah, I have Luis Garcia right in that, in that glut, you know, and, and, um, and like you said, while he doesn't have the same ceiling as some of these guys, um, I, I do feel as though, you know, because he's, they're up against Oakland, his, his win equity is higher. Mm -hmm. His just overall, you know, ability to get through six innings is higher. And his 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 probably the the percent chance he reaches twenty fantasy points, for example, is certainly higher than say Strider, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but Strider's mm -hmm. got that thirty five plus ball in, in the pot, you know, in there, right, right. Where where Lewis Garcia probably doesn't. Um, but he's certainly in play. I will say that. Um, and I don't. Uh, I don't have any interest in to Houston or Oakland. All right. Let's, uh, I, it, it's, this is one of those slates where I feel like we go through it all. And then by the end of like, we look at it tomorrow. We're like, wow, Montas pitched, you know, eight innings gave up two, one hit and, and struck out 10 and we didn't play him. That's the only thing I keep ringing in my head, but I, I just don't think it's the right play to do on this size of slate. I don't want to mess with the Houston. I don't know. It's yeah. I mean, I still think that their their offense is is definitely they're well overrated in general, but it they're just pesky enough and they don't strike out quite enough. So it's a little frustrating to try and take pitchers against them. Well, speaking of high variance pitchers, uh, George Kirby definitely has the upside to like win this slate at no ownership. And I don't think he's getting played. I really don't. Um, as of right now, I think that he might be like my if I if I do think my lineup is a little too chalky, which I doubt because the slate is so big. I think Kirby is completely reasonable pivot off of these other guys, including Strider. And I think you could even play lineups with he and Strider. If you don't want to play Clevenger, I think this is a really interesting guy to play who, who certainly has flashed the upside, um, you know, three out of his last seven over 26 point NC points um, had the big game. one of them against actually sorry, two of them against Oakland. So it's a little bit takes some of that excitement out of you, but I think he's very reasonable. I think he's got the upside um, another guy with a five and a half K prop, but I'm pro he's again, he's, he's not in my top five. He's on the outside looking in. So that's where I've got this whole game. And I don't really have any interest in the hitting. Yeah, this is my play. I'm I'm in. Oh, you're I, on I'm, Kirby. Okay. I'll do this. This is, this is exactly what I want to do. If, I mean, these things, if, if I don't, if I listen, if I don't, if I don't feel for whatever reason, like I, I don't feel like playing Clevenger right? <laughs> and I don't, and, and I, and I feel Strider is getting an ownership, which he will. Um, this is exactly who I want to play. Barrios um, Kirby, Barrios Kirby for the the combo that no one's playing. Well, it's going to be Kirby somebody. I, yeah. I don't know exactly what 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 the other one's going to be. I I don't even need to play to play that. I could I could play Kirby. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Play Kirby Nola. Uh, you know, I could play Kirby. I could I could probably play Kirby McClanahan. Mm -hmm. Um, and as long as I don't you know play all you know Coors or Dodgers, I could probably do that. Yeah. Um, but I I love I love the Kirby play. Listen, is Texas stinks. And, and 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 Kirby's got a got a ceiling. I'm I'm good. <laughs> it sounds good to me. I'm yep. in. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I, I hear you. Um, I, 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 he's on my outside looking in, but I, he, I might sneak him into some, especially the large field stuff. Personally, I think that's a clever way to go. All right. So then we get an interesting spot because as I keep reminding everyone, Josiah Gray is going to have extremely wide range of outcomes in all of his starts. He can get wild. He's going to give up home runs. He oddly gets wild, but he's also challenging guys. Um, incredible strikeout stuff. I think that, you know, but again, he, so he was our, he was our prospect that he's there. He's, he was our way of getting Scherzer and uh, he was the sort of the, the deal centered around him. He's a, t- you, you know, as a top, was a top prospect. He's really, really talented, but you know how I feel about pitchers facing their former teams and you know how I feel about the Dodgers in general. And I know they dudded last night and everybody, Oh, they're terrible. Say what I, they, they've only won 18 out of the last 21 and scoring more runs than everybody in baseball over that period. So Say we could say whatever we want, but the reality is something different. The only guys I'd see getting a ton of ownership here would probably be, I guess, Will Smith will have some ownership, Jake Lamb and Muncie um might get some ownership. But I I like I, I like the Dodgers stack tonight. I'm ready to go right back to it. I think that the ownership will be very, very low on this for this size of a slate. And especially after letting everybody down last night. Uh, I don't think that you're going to see more than one player, if that, in double figures of ownership on DraftKings. So I will be high on the Dodgers tonight at low ownership against our former, our, our former future star uh, in Josiah Gray, who just hasn't quite put all the pieces together yet. Although when you look at it, when you look at his games, I mean, it's it, it really is. He's like the he's like the ultimate boomer bust guy. Um, the Dodgers pitcher, pro, the profile works out really well against him. They obviously know his stuff better than anybody else, except for maybe the nationals. And I would argue they probably know his stuff better than the nationals. So I am going to be high on the Dodgers tonight. And also you can run on him to, to top everything off. So guys like Trey Turner should be terrific plays. Um, as well as you could, you could get steals out of bets or even guys like Muncie who's got sneaky speed. Bellinger's been stealing this year. Um, I just, I just like the spot for the Dodgers. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at, this is, this is, now, now, now you're poisoning me. Now, now, now it's fired up. Now, now, now that that Barrios Kirby freaking pairing is just right in there. Now, yeah. now, now, now we're playing. Now we're playing DFS. Yeah. Now, now, now I guarantee to have literally zero lineups cashing before I get home from the Mets game. Right. You got nothing but late, late night hitting and and Kirby pitching at ten at night. Let's go. I, yeah. I, 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 I like it. I like Love it. it. I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, I definitely I listen. I like the Dodgers as as my favorite. Um, they're my favorite non core stack. As a matter of fact, they're my uh, they're my favorite overall. Um, uh, I have them rated even by my raw points a little bit above the White Sox and Colorado. And listen, if you play what's his name Lamb, um, you you can get you know you get all kinds of stuff. You know, it, it's it's kind of kind of feels gross to pay 6,200 for, for Freddie Freeman in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, like you said, it's going to keep all this ownership down. I certainly think that Cody Bellinger is a great play at 3,700. Um, and uh, Lamb is good enough at 2,200 to make the rest of the stack work. I'm uh, I'm down. Yeah, I, I, I do like the Dodgers quite a bit. And so I, so I get it. I, I I think I'm going to be combining a lot of Dodger Boston, Toronto situations, and then I will get some exposure to, to Coors on both sides. That's sort of my main go-to today. Um, You know, what's good about the Barrios Kirby pairing, by the way, I I really, really think that both of their teams are going to win. You know what I mean? Like, I think I, you have Toronto is like you said a minus two fifty favorite against my you know maybe a really yep. gross St Louis lineup. Yep. And then you have Seattle against against uh, against uh, against Kyle Seager plus six seven other guys right. Um, and I I'm, Seattle just never loses unless it's the Houston. So so I I feel as though I'm starting with four points from these guys. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, and allows you to do what you do whatever else you want. So uh, I I might. Uh, and to go back to that Toronto game, by the way, if I am going to do this, it's probably a decent idea to play the Toronto guys um, for, you know, for, for correlation with, with, with Barrios. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I think, I think I'm, uh, I think I have some direction. I like it. I feel, I feel good about this. Uh, I will be live at six Eastern. <coughs> Excuse me. I will be at the game. <laughs> you will be at the game. 
And I uh, hope you enjoy it, man. Yep. And everybody else, hope you have a great day. And let's uh, let's see some screenshots tonight. Let's get some wins. I know Sounds one of our guys who, who hangs out in our chat, uh, he won a, a live final seat yesterday. Show out to Eric Johnson. And uh, Wait, no kidding. Yeah, but he, but he's he's actually not a subscriber. He's a guy who sort of followed around and he comes in all, all of our shows. Well, excuse me, but he's the one I helped with his golf lineup. That whole I spent like a full hour working on his golf lineup. He was in the live final of the golf thing. Well, and, Eric, uh, come on and join our site. Come on, man. It seems like it's going pretty well. Yeah. Um, anyway, good luck to everybody. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we will see. Hopefully you guys top the leaderboards. All right.